So, exciting news. We got a bunch of Heim joints in the mail and a left hand thread tap for said Heim joints. And I picked up some solid half inch aluminum rod, which all of this means we can make new tie rods. I'll just measure how much I need, drill and tap this rod, which hopefully it's, hmm, might have to rethink that. This is an old tie rod off of Sendy that got stripped out on one end, but we needed a lot shorter. So I'm just gonna use it as aluminum stock to make the center section. So here's one of our new tie rods with ball joints. Uh, we just ordered these off of eBay. Um, they're super cheap, just replacement parts for the Kawasaki ATV. So now I just have to shorten them about that much, make a sleeve, and weld it. that I can weld to for these steering column bearings. That one's just plain, it's also press fit. This one is not press fit, but it happens to have a set screw in it. And the reason for that is that this used to be a sprocket hub. <laughs> I took away a little bit of material there. That was a sprocket hub from uh, some version of Cinderella's drivetrain. Um, and uh, stuck it on the lathe and turned it out to fit over this bearing. And then I just left the keyhole, or I mean the set screw hole in there. So it slips on there. And you can uh, set screw it in place. So as soon as I get some mounts done, we'll have a complete lower steering column. <laughs> section of the steering finalized with the actual parts we're going to be using on it and I got the steering column just barely tacked in place here with its bearings. We ended up with a lot of angle and uh, earlier I was talking about how we wouldn't have much Ackerman. It turns out I was wrong because when you if you if these two arms are vertical then you wouldn't have Ackerman but like the more you push them out the more Ackerman you get to a certain extent. So not only do we have Ackerman, but we have adjustable Ackerman, so that's cool. Anyway, right now I'm working on the mounts for this rear bearing here. What I'm going to do for starters is just bake these brackets and tack it to the frame here, and then see how removable it is, because this shaft doesn't fit too tight in that bearing. It's snug, but not tight, so it, I should be able to just unbolt the, the other half of the steering column, unbolt this bearing, and then slide it out of that bearing, which will save me the trouble of having to make it removable. Got 
this end of the steering looking really good and we've got a solid mount here for both the differential and this steering bearing bracket. They both weld straight to this sleeve. So now that's all one unit and you unbolt this bulkhead here, that whole thing will come off with it. And then to get the shaft out, you just loosen the set screws and shove the bearing back and then it'll come up and out. Um, and then it just pops out of the, the rear one here. It's just welded to the frame and it just slides out of that bearing. So the whole thing's removable, just barely. Which means that it's now time to work on mounting this. Like I said, we don't need all four of these U-joints and this one's not removable. So I'll have to cut this shaft and cut this shaft and then sleeve them back together. But that's okay because that means I can change the length to whatever I need it. Step one is getting rid of all of this bracketry on this steering column because I'm not gonna use any of that. I'll just weld to it with tubes or whatever. Is that recommended for cleaning off round things? Highly recommended, especially when you have bearings to use. This all polished up nice, got all the brackets off of there. Thanks to the uh, belt sander. That thing, I don't know how we ever survived without it. But anyway, um, I've got a sleeve here. I don't know if it's what I'm gonna use, but it works great for temporary to figure out the length of this. And actually the length of it just happened to be that scrap of metal is pretty close. Yeah, so it'll be pretty simple to mount all this. I can just make a subframe out of one inch tubing that just goes, you know, down to here and down to here or whatever. So we got the foot pedal on the bench and uh Everything's held in place here. I just counted and there's now six U-joints on this thing. There's two on this shaft, two on this shaft, and now two on the steering shaft, which is now fully functional. And I'd say that's a solid amount of steering angle. Oh yeah. Finally, after like an entire week, the steering is done. It's all at least tacked together, so it's fully welded. All the bearings are there, all the joints are there, uh, the whole the steering column here is welded, and this part is welded on and braced. Um, it has a little bit of flex with just these two here, but I really like the way it looks being only supported by one side and the drive line's really in the way of putting a support on the other side. Plus, I don't know what I'm gonna be putting in this space. The gas tank may go in here, in which case the less bracing I have, the better for the gas tank. I think the next step is going to be fitting the body on and actually finalizing its like mounting and location. Not all the mounts necessarily, but just something to hold it in place so that then I can figure out where we can put the radiator and the rear shock mounts and we'll start on that and then move to the front shock mounts. to mount the body, um, or at least start doing so. 
that's the goal for today is to get it mounted and located so that we can keep going with all the other components. We're at the point where everything we add from this point on is going to be very tightly fit into the body. Right now I've got a couple of bolts here holding the body up. <laughs> just the right, just the right height. Support frame slider footboard perimeter piece. It serves a lot of functions. This bend here is at a slight angle up compared to you know this, but I didn't get it quite right the first time because it's just a really hard thing to calculate. And to bend sideways on a bend like that, this bender is really not set up to do that, but I found a way to kind of do it anyway. So just kind of stick it in there sideways. It wouldn't work in all situations, but for this one it does. And then I can just run it up a few if I hold this end down while I so now it's got a little bit of an upward bend there and that's just to get when it's installed here this end is already notched to fit into the spot that it fits into um, and then I just wanted this piece here to be angled a little more inward when this is where it sits. So this goes right about there. So it acts as like a frame slider sort of thing across the bottom of the body and the body can screw onto it right there. And then it ties back into the chassis back there right by the suspension pivot. And at the front, I'll make a bracket for it to bolt onto one of the engine mounts. This notch here on the back end of this goes into a junction of three tubes. It's right at one of the points of the trellis on the frame. So to get it notched all nice, we have this thing, which I found on Amazon called a pipe master. Um, I've basically never used it because most of the notches I do are just a single tube and it's kind of not worth it or I can't get it into the place that I need it to be. But in this case, it worked perfect because I just put it on the tube and then held it up to where it needs to go and just you can just slide these little teeth things around and get them to con contour to whatever you're notching to and then you slide it back a little bit, mark it out, and then just notch up to the marks. We have some tacking going on. We got the piece held up by a grinder and extra piece of tube. And we've got some knee pedaling going on. Oh yeah, good old knee pedal. Body is mounted. Yeah, so now every time I need to take it off and put it back on, it'll go on in exactly the same spot, which is very helpful. It'll still need mounts in the back. Yeah. Am I making a piece for this or am I making a weapon? I'm not sure. <laughs> it's rather pointy. But it fits quite nicely right there. Yeah, you're going like long ways against three pieces of tubing <laughs> yeah. at all different angles right there. Yeah, that's where the uh, belt sander comes in handy versus the tubing notcher.
seals your foot perfectly right there. There's really no need to fill it in with anything because there's no point that your foot can fall through. I mean, it could fall through here, but you'd have to be trying to do that. Rolling it out for its first time with steering. Steering and a front differential. Yeah. I think last time we rolled it out, the differential was an empty box. So we've got the other floorboard done and now we can test the steering with all the weight on it. It's not entirely fair because we're on ice, but it steers pretty nicely. And it has a lot of angle. It does. It's got a good bit of angle. And if the camber looks weird at all, that's just because it might be leaned to one side or the other. That ratchet strap suspension isn't doing the trick. Yeah, not exactly. You can see kind of where the foot position is. Yeah, this one, this one here ended up just a tiny bit wider just because this side of the frame has more space with everything. So your foot can kind of get wedged in there. I might end up doing some little basic plates under there, which would also act as a bit of splash protection. But this side also has a lot more room here, so you could totally put your foot through it, but there'll probably be some sort of control or other there because we need five separate controls. We need clutch, throttle, front brake, rear brake, and shifter. So something's gonna have to be done with your feet. So should we throw the body on and see what it looks like? Absolutely. So this is the first time we have it this complete with the body on. Yeah. And it even kind of feels like it has suspension. <laughs> it's got ratchet suspension right now. It looks like it's doing the, uh, the ka -chow thing from Cars. Oh you know, yeah. Uh, Lightning McQueen where he goes like. Yeah, true. <laughs> That's awesome. How's your vision? Yeah. Those, uh, those throttle bodies do block a little bit of the view. That's for sure but you can see around them, you know, no big deal. You can see all four tires in your peripheral vision while you're driving, so that's cool. Mm -hmm. Not often that while you're sitting in a vehicle, you can see all four of its tires. A little heavier on the right side. <clears throat> that's where most of the transmission is on the engine and the transfer case is off to that side. So try to offset that if we can, but if not, just dial it in with the suspension. Big news, we started a new YouTube channel. It's called GHPC2. The link is in the description along with our first video. Here's a little preview coming up soon. But we wanted to start a second YouTube channel because we get so many comments from you guys asking about Ethan's house or tree houses or you wanna see some of the dirt bike trails around Idaho. And we just think that that content can't live on the Grind Hard channel because that is its own thing and we always want it to stay high quality really thought out crazy builds. <laughs> so for everything else, we're gonna have GHPC2. Our first video is gonna be our first day ever snow biking. Ethan got a snow bike, it's super fun. We took it up in the mountains right back here and uh, that'll be our first video. We're gonna drop some just, uh, someone interviewed us for a TV show. We're gonna drop that interview on there just to answer a lot of questions you guys have about us personally and our backgrounds on filming and building things and yeah it's basically our platform to sit around and talk about our rogue fab bender or our merry braid grinder and show you guys every little thing about it so that's our plan with the channel right now it's gonna be for fun anything goes so if you want to see anything specific that you think could live on the second channel let us know it's GHPC2 link is in the description I just realized that 
This is the newest vehicle of any kind I've ever owned by almost a decade. 